I cannot accept any more slander from Arsenal. For Arsenal, rather. Um, guys, it's, it's the meal. Um, remember, this is this is going to be a long post-match analysis because I'm not going to go in deep. I have a detailed itinerary here because we're going to fully analyze this FA Cup final because there's a lot for me to say. No, so, for people who don't like the meal, who are against me having the meal, I'm sorry, but when it comes to these kinds of things, a meal is needed. Um, first off, where do, where do we start? This is the first time this season since Conte's tactical change that he has been completely and totally outplayed. United didn't outplay them when they beat them 1-0. They shot them down. Tottenham didn't really outplay them, but they caused them issues. What um, Arsenal did was a complete and total pimp down. They got pimped. I mean, Chelsea got pimped. Um, for me, I start... I'm, I'm going to start right, right at the top here. Arsenal have been criticised for being very poor defensively. I there's not enough grit. There's there's not enough fight. The defensive work of Arsenal, the tackling, the defending, was completely was absolutely exceptional. Chelsea, because obviously I'll get to some of the issues that Chelsea had, but every time that Chelsea came into that last third, they could hardly get any space. There was nothing for a through ball. They could hardly create anything because. The shape of Arsenal, how everybody pulled back, how hard everybody worked, the tackling, the last-ditch tackling, the, the blocking, and how everybody really... The physicality and the aggression from them is just what shocked me. Because, again, this is what Arsenal have been criticised for. I, They don't have the heart. They, they don't really um, dig, dig, dig deep. But, no, man, this... As I said again, this shows you how football is crazy. I, didn't, I did not see this from Arsenal. I don't see this from Arsenal. This is the most physical, intense... Character in the fused performance I've seen from Arsenal in a long, long time. Um, Sanchez. Okay, let's talk about that G. Um, okay. In all honesty, when I saw it, when I saw it in real time, I thought possibly handball. Then when I saw the replays, I was like, it doesn't look like a handball. It looked like if it hit his chest. Remember, the referee was behind Sanchez, and. The, and also, it wasn't an offside because, again, um, thingy wasn't, uh, Ramsey wasn't interfering with, with, with play. So the issue was that handball. It was only after like, the sixth or the seventh replay from a different angle, i.e. the angle that the referee wasn't looking from, that I was like, okay, yeah, he, it hit his hand. First of all, very good G by, by, by Sanchez. Sanchez, had, again, had a, a, a superb game. I don't think he was the man of the match, but I'll get to that afterwards. Great finish, and this showed again how important Chess is for, for Arsenal. But the reason why Chelsea fans cannot pinpoint this and say, oh my gosh, they got beaten by a hand or anything like that is I'd have sympathy if this was a, an even game. But Aston so outplayed Chelsea. They were so the better team. They gave them so many issues that I can't really have that much um, sympathy. Speed. And direct. I've said this throughout this whole season. The, how Conte got Chelsea to win 30 games a season, be Premier League winners, and somehow not get reincarnated week by week with a dude called Gary Cale and David Lewis in defence is shocking. Because, and this was shown again today, I've never rated David Lewis as a central defender. I, I've never had. He's had a good season. But I, I, will heal. I would never, ever, ever pick him in my central defence. Gary Kiel, same thing. And Tottenham showed this. I, ch these Chelsea boys, they don't like speed. They don't like if you go at them. They don't like if you, they don't like if you play the ball quickly and that ball moves in a very direct, fast motion. They don't li li like that. They prefer if you play in front of them and you're, and you're fast, slower and methodical in how you, you build up. But 
what Arsenal did from the from the whistle was they they they, they got at them quickly, direct. Every time that ball was with, was with a player, how can we get it out to the wing? And how can we get it 30, 40 yards? Not a, a short ball, a long ball on the ground, boom. Let's make these guys walk. And when you make these guys walk, you pull them out of position. And because Devin Lewis and Gary Kill are not really smart defenses positionally like a Bonucci or a, or a Kekelini, this is where they get exposed. So if you pull them out by having quick fastballs and you're relentless in how you shove at them, you will cause them issues, which is what Tottenham showed and Arsenal took this to the next level, 2.0. Wait, um, hey, what the hell is this? Um, so, no, no, but yeah, so basically, to the other point I made, which is that the game, look, I don't know whether it's the formation or it was the occasion, but literally, it was almost a perfect performance from Arsenal, i.e. when they attacked, they attacked quick, furious, fast, and they always found themselves in space, and they really used the, the, the space of the pitch. But it's defensively. Every time they didn't have the ball, they literally, Hazard wasn't in the game. Hazard was completely shot down. There was hardly any space, and for, especially now in that first half, I don't think Chelsea had a single shot on target in that first half, because the defending of Chelsea was so good, and look, man... Rob Holding was very good. This, this, this guy, I think, is going to really mature to be a great defender. But shout out to Metasaka. Brought in from the doldrums because of Koscielny's suspension. Metasaka had a huge game for it. He had a captain's game, a leader's game. Um, and this goes... Let's look at Chelsea now. In my preview, I said that you've got to roll with your Fabregas, Kante, midfield partnership. And I think this is a, a, a point that I think I'm not sure who made this point. Whether it was useful or something, someone from Twitter. And, and it, this is a, a the, the fair point. The whole argument from having Matic and Kante is you stop being overrun in midfield. But Chelsea were so badly overrun in midfield. They had so such little midfield presence, which was what shocked me because I thought Chelsea would control the midfield, but they were so overrun so torn apart in midfield that there was no point. So for me, if I was um, Conte, I was like, look, the matic Kante thing isn't working because we're, we're totally overrun in, in midfield. I bring in Fabregas. Latest, half time. Whole 45 minutes, we're making Fabregas because let's get at these guys. We're one zero down. We need some, some kind of cre cre creativity. Which goes back to another point of Moses. Really, in that game, especially in that first half, Moses was Chelsea's best player. As in, he was the only player who you could see something happening in. Um, but the issue with Moses is that as good as he was, he wasn't really beating his man. He wasn't really putting in a good cross. Just that the ball kept on going to him because, again, Marcus Alonso didn't have a very good game. So the ball was hardly going towards him. But every single time that ball was going right towards Moses, and Moses was really trying to find space, find players. But there wasn't really any, basically... What you get from a Danny Alves, you don't get from Moses, because Danny Alves will force the issue. He'll put in a very good cross. He will dribble and he gives you much more finesse um, and a lot more attacking um, flu, 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 fluidity as opposed to, to Moses. But the, the very fact that Moses was really their best outlet and it wasn't Hazard, who is a dribbler and who is technically better, was the serious issue. And Pedro, bless his soul, he, he did his best. But again, I thought William would have been a better option as opposed to him. Um... And in this game, you saw the bad day because this goes back to what has been Conte's um, Achilles heel and his issue throughout this whole season. Um, loyal to a, to, to, to a fault. Costa did not have a good game. Yes, he scored the, the goal. Yes, he almost scored the, the second goal. And Conte would say, well, you know, he will get, get, get a goal. 100%, but that's why I should have come on in that second half. At the latest, 65th, give, give homeboy 20 minutes. Give, give homeboy 20, 20, 25. Come on, man. I mean, mate, Conte, come on. Come on, give me a break. Um, because for, for Costa, again, he was losing the ball. He was fighting with players. He was too aggressive. He was awkward, um, cumbersome. And I just thought, and I believe that Metasaka and Holding, they really sorted him out and they sorted him out. And I think the amount of defensive cover and how congested it was made it difficult for Costa to really get any of his of his, his game going. Um, 
But the main thing is that the amount of chances Arsenal had was, I mean, it was, it was incredible. As in, in that first half, Arsenal could have lubricated Chelsea just in that first half. Um, and especially when that second half came in, even before the, them sending off, chance after chance. And what just shocked him was how easily they got past Chelsea's midfield, how easy they dominated the, 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 the midfield, and the ease with which they just caught through that Chelsea defence like Swiss cheese. It was so easy. And the amount of space that they were finding, and again, Wenger was smart because Welbeck 100%, was, that, was, that was the move to make. That Welbeck starting ahead of, ahead, ahead of Giroud because it just gives you a better attacking threat. But the runs that Sanchez was making, and, and Ozil, Ozil, I said again, if Ozil has a big game, it is so huge for Arsenal. And I think Ozil was finding space. He was using the ball well. He was getting far more in, in, involved. He was really moving on the bat and putting himself in dangerous positions to really try and actually impose his, his playmaking game. So you really saw Ozil at his best. And he even made a, a, a damn defensive tackle. Um, obviously, you look at that, the dive from Moses. 100%, that was a dive. It was deserved. He actually got, got that first yellow when he pulled down at um, Welbeck. And again, for Moses, stupid. So stupid. Again, like, why would you do that? Nigerians don't, don't dive. So that was, that, that was just bad. For Costa, very good goal. That was a very good goal. And I think when Chelsea scored, I thought this would go into extra time. But again, stroke of genius. You look And, and you look at the, the second goal. Obviously, Giro coming in, the, 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 the cross. And David Luiz. Um, you're a man down. You somehow pulled it to 1-1. It is imperative that defensively you are sound. And when the ball was, was coming in, David Luiz, the cross is going to come in. The only thing you should be dealing with is what's around me. You should be looking around and saying, what is around me? Let me block. Ramsey was so open. There was no other player that Luis had to defend. His eye was so focused on what was happening with, with, with Giroud. Whereas there was already, I think it was Kayla who was already on um, um, Giroud trying to block the cross. That he had no bearing on what was happening behind him. And that is crazy. There was no reason for him to do that. And this just shows that Luis again, sorry man, defensively, positionally... You, the, the guy got exposed. This was a bad game from Luis, and this was this showed you the bastard of Luis. He's been he's been good this season. He's, he's been very very solid, but again, in this game he got really like shocked. Um, so yeah, as a whole, one hundred percent without a doubt, Arsenal deserved this victory. Um, and this wasn't Juju. Because obviously I was joking on on, on Twitter, I was saying, you know, Juju and everything, but I look at that and do you know the thing that pisses me off the most? If I was not played like 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 this much earlier on in the um end of the season, I would I would I would still have 10, 10, 10 cracks. Because there's a good team here. There is a good team here. And if when Arsenal get it right and they play well, they they can be a very good team. As in Chelsea. Premier League champions, 30 wins. These guys, they they found it they found it difficult to, to, to cope with them. Well, Kante has allowed a, a bit bad game, and again, this was a this was not a great game from from from, from Kante. Um, but again, going to the whole thing, Sanchez was voted as the man of the match. But for me personally, I think the entire Arsenal team have to be given a point of the back. I don't I don't think there's one. Claire out on amazing player. I just think the entire team were great. I think you have to just say men of the match, which which were which was the Arsenal team. As in from defense to attack was amazing, but it was the intensity with which they played in from the very first minutes and the fact that, that they were able to maintain that. But also it was the aggression, it was the character, it was the fight. Something that they've been criticized for is that fight that they had that was just great. And for Charles, you said, okay, where did they lose this? You look I, there are many things. Okay, first of all, you look at it. Okay, let me just break this down. This is my issue with Hazard. Hazard is technically the better footballer as opposed to Sanchez. But 10 times out of 10, I'll pick Sanchez over Hazard because Sanchez can walk in any situation. Very rarely will Sanchez be fully quiet. For Hazard, your team is struggling. It's tough. You've got to make something happen. And the fact that he was so quiet... 
and he was almost waiting for I think it was almost as if he was waiting for, for Chelsea to have some domination within the game, which I thought would happen, but never did. And again, this is an indictment that for a guy who's like a superstar, you have to demand the ball and make something happen with the ball. Try and bring players into the game. Try and make a killer pass. Try and, and beat a man and take a shot. Try and really force the issue and create a situation out of nothing. Those are what your magical players for are for turning a bad performance into a, a win. Um, I look at Conte, Matic and Kante, it didn't work. You go over on it in midfield. You should have started with Fab Fabregas, but beyond that, okay, you started with those two guys. Fabregas should have come on at halftime. You got so outplayed that you had to change it up at, at, at halftime. Having Lilton say, you know, we'll get back in the game. Nah, it, that, you can't keep doing that. And I think the issue with Conte is that he always believes that, look, man, many times before we've we played badly and it still worked. You can't keep rolling that dice. That will not keep on working for you. Sometimes you have to just pull in the sober early. Um, you, again, loyal to it to your fault. Um, again, same thing with Basuai, which I've, which I've come on earlier. But for me, I just thought that um, is that defense. And I think what Conte has to learn from and build upon, and I think I already think he knew this, is that this, this is really an my defense. I believe as a split quarter can work in a three. Luis and Kale are not elite defenders. They, 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 they just aren't. And if more teams follow the Tottenham and the Arsenal framework, i.e. be brave, be direct, be fast, be quick, put them under a lot of pressure, spread it out wide, stretch them on the mat, really try and force them to rethink really about their, their defensive position. Because, again, Kale and Luis, they're not smart defenders. Okay, central defense is is our top position. Playing in a back three is very hard. Hence why you what Bonucci and Kellini do and how little mistakes that they make has to really be understood and appreciated because playing in a back three is very, very hard because your defensive IQ has to be so high. Um but yeah, man, 100 percent you you can't slander Arsenal. And as for Wenger. I still believe that Wenger has to leave that. The only way Arsenal move forward is without Wenger. That's what, what I, I believe. But this is a very interesting situation because I thought this would happen. I thought this would happen that they don't get top four, he wins the FA Cup. But not only that, it's the manner in which he did. Let's say it was a lucky FA Cup winner or something like that. Then he would be like, okay, we won the FA Cup, but look at how we did. We're not that great. Arsenal were so good. They so outplayed Chelsea. They should have won by five or six goals. It was such a comprehensive victory based on performance that if he signs that contract, I still think it's wrong, but he's got a great argument. <laughs> That's the issue. He's got a great argument because even Arsenal fans who are saying Wenger will be like, he should be out. We're not going to move forward. We're still going to run into our same issues. We're, we're, we are still a level below Liverpool, Tottenham, Man City, possibly even United, Chelsea. But he did win us the FA Cup. That was a very good performance. We did pimp slap Chelsea, the Premier League winners. So in your back of your mind, you think that, man, maybe we can just carry on this good performance into next season and maybe we can do something. But do you keep Alexis Sanchez? Will, is Alexis Sanchez happy to play on Thursdays? Is an FA Cup win enough for Alexis Sanchez to say no to Bayern Munich if they, they come for him? I don't think so. But look, man. Again, I know we like to insult Arsenal, like to make fun of them, Arsenal fan TV, so forth. But on today, this is Arsenal's day. And you have to give the players and Wenger a round of applause.